Today I'm going to show you the latest version of Pivotal Cloud Foundry, a platform as a service from Pivotal Software. I'm going to show you how you can deploy any 12-factor application across different infrastructures like vSphere, vCloud Air, Amazon Web Services, or OpenStack. Before we install Pivotal Cloud Foundry, let's get the feel for how it works using our hosted version of Cloud Foundry at Pivotal Web Services. You can run your own apps on our platform by visiting run.pivotal.io. You can manage your apps using Pivotal Web Services App Manager. It's an awesome interface, and we'll see more of it later when we install it ourselves. But we're going to use the command line tools for now. I have a little application called Nine Fellas. Here's what it looks like. It figures out which infrastructure it's on, and then it shows a little fella for each thread running in the application. I can curl the application to add threads like this. I can also remove threads. It also shows groups of fellas for each instance of the application. Let's scale the app up to three instances to see more fellas. And then we can add threads to those. My app uses Redis to store its data. So after logging into Pivotal Web Services, I can look in the marketplace, find a Redis service, and create a Redis instance. Then to push my app, I use the CF push command with a no start flag so I can bind the service after the app's deployed. Then I start the app using CF start and the app is up and running. Now that I've pushed the app to Pivotal Web Services, let's set up some other Cloud Foundry installations on vSphere, vCloud Air, and AWS to see how that works. All of Pivotal's products are located at Pivotal Network. That's network.pivotal.io. I need to download the commercial distributions of Pivotal Cloud Foundry by logging in and clicking on the products I need. You'll see that I'm downloading older versions of these products because I'm going to show you how to upgrade the entire platform after we install it. I need three things from Pivotal Network. I need the Elastic Runtime product, which is Pivotal's commercial distribution of Cloud Foundry runtime. That's the piece that runs and orchestrates Java, Node, PHP, Ruby, Scala, Go, and other languages in the cloud. I also need Pivotal Cloud Foundry's Ops Manager, which installs the platform itself. I could also download other services like MySQL or Mongo, but my app uses Redis, which is the last download I need. Pivotal Cloud Foundry Ops Manager for vSphere is an OVA template that you upload and deploy using the vCenter client. First we choose the template, then answer a few questions about the VM we're creating, and watch the VM boot. Once it has an IP address, we can go to a browser and start using Ops Manager to manage and install Pivotal Cloud Foundry and Redis. We import both the Elastic Runtime and the Redis products into Ops Manager. These are the two products that we grabbed from Pivotal Network earlier. And then we add them to our installation dashboard. And once they're added, we can configure each product with settings like IP addresses, URLs, and SSL certs. Once our products are configured, green, and good to go, we can apply our changes and watch Ops Manager install Pivotal Cloud Foundry. This process takes from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your hardware. When the process is over, we have a full installation of Pivotal Cloud Foundry that we can target the exact same way we targeted the hosted version of Cloud Foundry at the beginning of the video. By using the CF target command, you can see that I'm targeting the vSphere installation of Cloud Foundry. First, I'll push my application without starting it, which gives me a chance to find and bind the Redis database. Now I can look at the marketplace command just as I did on Pivotal Web Services and see what's available. All I have is a Redis service. That's all I need. As I said earlier, if I wanted a Mongo, Cassandra, Jenkins, or other service, I could have downloaded them from Pivotal Network and installed them using Ops Manager the exact same way I installed these products. I create the service, bind my app, start it, and begin using it the same way I did before adding threads, scaling it, and viewing the results. Installing Pivotal Cloud Foundry on vCloud Air is very similar to vSphere. It's similar to AWS and OpenStack too, but we'll get to that in a second. 
After grabbing the product from Pivotal Network, you upload it to your vCloud Air catalog and then add it to your cloud. This will prompt you with questions about which network and storage you're going to use, and then it'll boot with an IP you can see in a browser. You configure Ops Manager, upload products to it, and deploy on vCloud Air using the same push button operation as before. The 1.4 version of Ops Manager is a big milestone for Pivotal. Now we can deploy Pivotal Cloud Foundry in your Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. To do this, we start in our AWS dashboard and we use a cloud formation script to create all of the security groups, subnets, RDS instances, and load balancers that we need to get up and running with Ops Manager. After the cloud formation script completes, we have a running Ops Manager. We can upload the same Elastic Runtime and Redis products to AWS. They are the same exact packages deployed across each infrastructure. After deploying to AWS, we can target our API and deploy the same app to see our familiar fellas on Amazon. Before we go any further, it's a good time to mention Apps Manager. While Apps Manager manages the operations of your PaaS, Apps Manager manages the apps deployed on it. Apps Manager is the same front-end interface that you saw at the beginning of the video. You'll recognize it in a second. It's deployed inside of Elastic Runtime as an application on the system domain. That system domain was t365d.com, just some domain that your friendly narrator happens to own. And now we can go to the Apps Manager by logging into the bundled login server, which by the way, integrates with LDAP and Active Directory, supports OAuth and SAML. Once we're logged in, we can see the apps running on this instance. It's the same elegant interface as the hosted version on Pivotal Web Services. So far, we've looked at deployments to vSphere, vCloud Air, and AWS. Let's also look at OpenStack. Here's the OpenStack Horizon dashboard. We'll launch the Ops Manager instance by firing up an image and waiting for it to boot, just as we did with the other infrastructures. Once it boots, we go through the same process to install, manage, and upgrade our paths. Speaking of upgrades, here's how it works. Going back to the vSphere instance we installed originally, we export our installation from 1.3 and then we import it into a 1.4 version of Ops Manager. After that's complete, we can upgrade our products to a newer version, in this case, 1.4. Here we'll upgrade Elastic Runtime and then install it. The app we've been deploying, the one that shows all the fellas, it's actually been sending requests to the original app on Pivotal Web Services. This endpoint allows us to have a view of the apps across each infrastructure. So that's the demo. We deployed some fellas on vSphere and on AWS, and here we can see all of our fellas hanging out together. A peaceable kingdom for sure.